And hello, hello, hello! Um, I know I was supposed to continue the stream yesterday, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. things happened. Uh, mostly troubleshooting this happened. Uh, I didn't want to come unprepared for this section of the stream, because uh, uh, last stream was about two hours and it was way uh, more than I was expecting it to be. But anyway, I uh, hope you're having a great time. So, and we're going to continue where we are left off. Uh, and I'm quite happy because I have some, some of the knowledge uh, to continue. So what happened until then, uh, we were playing with the screen and we connected the screen. Uh, we also installed the BL Touch on the printer and I've changed the motherboard which is right now at the back of it. In a second we're going to go over the connection because I've checked a couple of things and I've discovered a couple of things which I didn't know. If you upgraded the printer before you're probably going to be so much smarter than me uh, but uh, it was a fun uh, learning. I have some hot coffee Mm, freshly brewed, and it's a quarantine. No, it's a lockdown day, for day four. So, uh, <laughs> and that's that's been in here in this shape for like two days. And I really, I'm really, really keen to get the um, 3D printer working again. So, uh, let's start with an uh, overview, and uh, let's start with hi to everyone. Uh, hope you're having a great time, and uh, uh, everyone's healthy. So uh, let's take a look at what we've uh, um, what we've done last time. I need to turn the printer because we're going to go over the cables again because there's some things that I'd like to point out. Now, uh, if you just joined, uh, don't worry. There's going to be like a condense, like I spent entire day filming everything again because I've uh, disassembled this like four times and then film step by step with a proper camera because I'm not just going to use a live stream to splice the video together I have a designated camera work for this and uh, um, close-ups and, uh, and and everything so let me have a look if I've got a proper camera uh, for this so let me get you a close-up maybe uh, maybe like this and do I have to move probably I'm gonna move this one to here it's gonna be much better now if you have any questions or comments or you want to help me please do so and just write it in the chat and I'm more than welcome to, to interact I have a chat in front of me so I'll be able to see it so if you've not been there before um, uh, I have a, a big tree tech uh, 2.4 inch touch display I have a SKR a mini E3 motherboard and I have a BL touch in here as, and a um, dual gear extruder set so that's what I've been uh, upgrading with I also have a couple of surfaces I have a, a magnetic uh, uh, bed and I have a glass bed because I want to see what are the results now previously can you see? Yes. Previously, I've printed all-in-one set. Uh, I probably should have get the link for that. But it moves entire electronics to the back of the printer, and I'm just going to uh, expose this once again because I was doing some filming and show you how to connect certain parts. Because I've uh, maybe uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's face it, I've made some mistakes uh, in my previous live stream, and I'm here to kind of clarify and uh, uh, clear this up. So I'm going to unplug the uh, y-axis. The motors I could get inside more easy and slide out the tray with all the electronics. So oh, in that mode uh, everything is inside. So I have my Octo, Octo, um, Raspberry Pi running Octopi server, Octoprint server, that's what it's called. In this section and in here you've got the motherboard. So just exposing this as we speak to move cables aside everything's connected right now and before we're gonna start testing it maybe a problem it's off anyway so I'm just gonna disconnect the Raspberry Pi as well because it's connected to power so a welcome to a motherboard and uh, I'm gonna get some pointer and I get the camera a little bit closer so you could see what was going on in here uh, that's gonna be probably Error, please use a keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Is that a problem with the life? No, it looks okay. Um, let me just do a test. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, I'm going to use this as a pointer. And we're going to 
Uh, let's take a look at two things. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about the screen. Now, the screen can be connected in two ways. You can use that uh, expansion 1 or expansion 2. Now, if you're going to use expansion so this is this one. If you're going to use expansion 1, you'll connect it in kind of a dumb mode. It will display uh, the screen, but uh, it, you're not going to interact with it. The printer is not going to be connected. Now, what you have to do is use that uh, ribbon cable. There's a five cables in here and uh, use this as a serial, I think, uh, if I'm correct. So use the serial for this. Uh, and you have to connect this to a motherboard. On the motherboard itself, uh, there is a TFT. Uh, can I can I just grab this and kind of zoom out for you guys? Well, let's have a look if I can do this. Uh -huh. I'm going to be very very gentle. Okay, so in here uh, you will see that there is a, a connector. This is ma ma marked as a TFT. So this is this. And uh, the trick is, on this side, you have to connect the reset pin, and on this side, wherever it is. So you have to remember that on this side of the board, on the power side where the fuse is, it needs to be a reset pin. And how do you identify the reset pin? Is when you look at the connector on, the, on here, and the reset pin is labeled. Uh, can, I, can I have a proper focus? Thank you. So the reset is labeled in here, just uh, those wires are different um, different markings on them, so they are easy to trace. So that's something to bear in mind. And that will make it work. So with that said, uh, we can move to a second thing that I was... Oh, actually, I'm going to address one more thing. Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was connecting the, the hot end, so the hot end connections are... Oh, mind this mess in here so can you see it uh, maybe so this is your first slot in here this is your temperature for hot end the thermistor for hot end and uh, then you have a hot bed then you have a z stop then you have a yeah i think y, uh, y step and then x step and then you have two fans now the one in more towards the middle it's the fan that is going to be connected constantly uh, let me just can I kind of move this? Can you see this? So this is uh, the one that you can connect constantly and the one in the same line as the Z-stops you can actually control this fan and the speed of this fan and this is the fan on the extruder that you can use to blow and cool the plastic so uh, it's worth having this fan actually connected to the one that you could control from the display so you could have a well control over it so that's that's kind of the plan Uh, right, and which leads us to a last connection, uh, which is a BL touch. So BL touch, uh, it slots in the black and white cable. It slots in into a Z stop. Now it uses that as a Z stop, and there are some guides that actually tell you that you're supposed to splice the Z stop with this, so you could actually connect. Uh, Z stop and uh, stop from the um, the BL touch uh, together. Another thing that uh, they don't tell you but, um, is that uh, if you look at, uh, you're probably not going to see it, but I'm going to pull it out for you because that's important. So this is a connector uh, for it and uh, it might come with different colors. Now, I would assume that the yellow is a data and then you have a plus and minus for, um, for the C power. I've not tested it, but that's my assumption. Now, the way it was shipped, the blue and the red was reversed. And I scratched my head for a long time before I actually found some in decent information explaining this. Now, for this motherboard, in order to get that mounted, you have to reverse this. So, uh, blue one has to be on the outside and the red one has to be inside and then you slot that into a servo, there's this, uh, one slot called servo and the yellow pin, the data pin I would assume, that's the data pin, it's facing the SD card. So that's how you do it and let's uh, slot this back into a servo. So those were kind of building mistakes I've made on my last stream. Probably wasn't aware of 
uh, certain things. So uh, now we have everything connected, so we can kind of slot everything back. And uh, um, well, give it a go, I guess. So uh, I'll just, uh, I'm not going to close it off yet. I'm just going to slide that in because uh, cables aren't properly managed. I'm going to manage the cables a little bit better. So I'm just going to reconnect the uh, stop. And that's the Y. And reconnect the servo. If I can <laughs> get my fingers underneath it. Come on, you can do it. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> It's a bit of a fiddly job. Um, if I'm gonna move it, I don't have enough cable length. This printer would benefit from having a taller legs, honestly. Ah. Okay, that's inside. Um, reconnect the Raspberry Pi. Well, actually, we don't need the Raspberry Pi for now, so I'm not going to reconnect it. And everything's connected as far as I'm concerned. I'm just going to leave it as this for now, like that. It doesn't matter. We're just going to test it. So um, we're going to test this uh, with a screen. Uh, the screen is going to be visible. Uh, so let's turn it on. Now well, I already flashed this, but I, uh, I actually can I can show you the process because I have uh, I think SD card ready as well. So what you do, you. Uh, I had problems with this as well, so maybe, yeah, that's that's how I'm gonna show you. Uh, you download the data from the GitHub page. Uh, there is a firmware and there is a folder with pictures. Now, the folder with pictures had some issues, and I ended up downloading a custom pack made by someone uh, that actually contained all the images. So let's uh, kind of get started, and I'll show you how. What is it? So at first, if you have a SD card with firmware, you're gonna go through the firmware screen, and that's how it's gonna work. I already um, did my logo on it because why not? That's a standard uh, message right now associated with BLTouch. BLTouch isn't 100% calibrated yet, and you can see there uh, right now I'm connected. So can I just kind of focus on this? Can I? Yes, I can. Come on. Keep it in focus. So as you can see, the printer is connected. I can see the basic details about the printer. All the sensors are responding well. And uh, you can access different menus and do different things. So uh, let's, for example, move the Z-axis just to see that everything is working. I really like this menu. Maybe 10. And I'll show you that. You can see, so yeah, I ac actually can control this. So right now, this is it. Now, uh, let me pull out the card. If you have missing icons uh, on this, and they are just white, come on, focus. Come on. My webcam doesn't want to focus sometimes. I don't know why. Is it just screen being so dirty? No, I don't think so. So, there were a couple of issues. First of all, if you have missing icons, you will have to refresh uh, different icons. And I had, uh, I wasn't successful with the uh, icons that come from the um, GitHub of the Big Tree Tech. Some of them were corrupted. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I couldn't resolve that by refreshing, so I actually ended up uh, just uh, Googling it in the internet. So, uh, that's been done. And the second thing is, now I'm not entirely sure why, but if you hold and uh, uh, hold the knob and press it down, you have two options. You've got Marlin mode and you have the touch mode. And I had Marlin mode working, but for some reason, it just gave me a white screen now. You can still go back from it and go back to touch screen. And I'm not going to really cry about it because uh, it's unlikely I'm going to use that. I'm just going to take advantage of the touch interface and uh, use this one instead. I'm still it still bothers me that this is not focusing. 
properly. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's okay. And if you want to have a default display running, just connect it uh, via the display cable, the, uh, the original cable to the motherboard, and you can have two displays at the same time if you need to. My idea is to 3D print enclosure for this and uh, completely remove the uh, stock display. And that's why I went for a smaller one. If you just want to replace the display, there is a 3.4, I think, for, yeah, 3.4 or 3.5, 3.4 uh, inch version that fits exactly in the same spot. So uh, that's, that's, the, that's what I'm going for. And that's basically how you get the screen to work. Okay, so moving on, let's take a look at the probe. Uh, we should be able to see the probe. Maybe I'll, I'll let me just reposition the uh, camera slightly so you can see it better. And maybe I'll do something like this. Okay, now that should be enough. So right now i can actually try and do some leveling so if you go to movement let's home everything so i'm homing this now and as you can see it will actually home the z-axis as well So this is done. Now, uh, the reason while this is homed and zeroed, it's not a big problem, but uh, um, it's not calibrated yet. The printer doesn't know what is the offset. Now, the good thing about this display is that you can actually go to the uh, menu and you can um, set the offset, uh, but the, I would have to load some filament to try it. And so far, I've not uh, had the time to do it, but um, how you would do it is uh, you'd basically, right now, it is uh, set to zero, right? And how to create an offset, you have to just uh, home the Z axis and then see how much of a difference is between uh, uh, z, uh, z axis being home in a zero position and actually extruded uh, uh, touching the bed in there. So that's how you do it. So uh, let's uh, take a look, quick look. Uh, if I want to do it, it would be like this. So uh, let's go back and we need to. Go back, move, and uh, I guess uh, let's. Can I can I home Z just? I think it's gonna pull up again. Yeah. So, so that's not perfect. Okay. So what we have to do is. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, let's have a look. Right here, can I just move this one? This is test, this is stop, this is deploy. So, what's, m what's my actual position? So, Z is 10 millimeters it's more than 10 millimeters and from here so uh, let's move it let's move it and see how low I can get first so I can go 10 millimeters uh, probably gonna do by millimeter now just gonna remove this uh, see it better okay so I'm nearly in a position now I would need to use a piece of paper to actually um, get a bit of the guidance of what's, what's needed so let's move it this okay so this is I think uh, 
uh, needs small finer adjustments so I'm just going to switch to 0.1 millimeter there's a tiny little bit of drag and maybe one more and you see how it feels okay yeah so so this that would be something like that so right now it shows me that I am 7 millimeters. I don't know if you can see it there 7.2 millimeters below the z-axis so that's my offset so don't know if I'm doing it right I can only verify by um, actually printing something if I'm gonna go to the uh, BL touch settings click on uh, offset now I should do this to actually I'm gonna be that forever so minus seven and then well, seven point one point two wasn't it and then save it so we have our offset set I'm just gonna verify if that was our offset so yeah okay and uh, now I should be able to kind of print at least that's the theory <laughs> I re I'm really hope I'm correct about this so uh, yeah that's the plan so if I'm going to go and pick a leveling which I'm not going to probably oh, I can run it and level and see what happens so if I gonna go to movement uh, leveling I think this is a custom points to level. I don't know. Uh, that just brings it to a level. Okay, so I have to run this and to run IBL, I guess. And that's gonna do entire bed scan. so it's gonna go like seven by seven grid so it's gonna take quite a bit of time uh, one of the cool things I can show you I already have a control over the fan so you can pick your fan spe speed in here you can either do it with a knob or you can just set it to full and that's pretty cool and this is the fan that is on the extruder itself and it blows over the uh, printed surface so you can control this uh, the fan that cools down the hot end it's uh, fixed so you can't control the RPMs Right, so I think that's that's how it's supposed to work. Now, to verify it, obviously I have to print something out, and I'm absolutely terrified. I'm probably going to do it on this surface because I don't want to uh, mess up any other surfaces I've got. But that's the that's the plan. Right now, the bed is probably very skewed because I was. Uh, mm, repairing everything and uh, I should have probably make a bit of a basic calibration but I'm just kind of gonna let it run and uh, do it with bad, bad leveling like this uh, you can modify this now initially I was not able to work it out um, well actually can I just open the website for you I'll work, open the website for you so you can see it So while it's leveling, big three tech, and let's switch the, to my capture. Okay. Why do I do this in a screen capture? I shouldn't have this in a screen capture. So, so this is the GitHub. And if we're going to go to the SKR Mini, my understanding is that in the firmware uh, we have 1.2. Uh, you have default firmware which is unmodified. You have a BL Touch and you have a BL Touch for Z Homing. Now, obviously, if you want to flash these, so what you have to do is just to take. Uh, 
um, change the name to a, a firmware.bin and then put it on the SD card and flash it. Now, I've actually, uh, I don't have a link in here right now, I have it saved somewhere, but I've used someone else's guide who pre-configured this for BL Touch for the Enzer. Now, I don't know how much different it is from this file in here, but I'm uh, kind of hoping that it would work uh, regardless. Now, because I think this is already working, there is very little point of me actually trying to compile it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but if you want to cha make your changes yourself, you need to go to the folder in, in here with the firmware, <coughs> then go to a um, Marlin, if I remember correctly. And then I think it's a configuration H. And now you search for um, blue B L touch. And this is the part where you have to enable it. So first of all you have to uncomment this and check your settings with the BL touch and everything you used. And some of the subscriptions are already done. I'm describing it, but because I didn't compile it myself, uh, I'll kind of give you an overview. There is an instruction set that you can see online how to edit this. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use that in my live stream, uh, in my live stream, in my video after this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it's one of those things. And then you can use either uh, virtual, what is it called? Uh, uh, visual, visual Studio Code, or you can use Arduino IDE to compile this and uh, upload it uh, to your printer. So any changes uh, you will do in this uh, obviously would be uh, individual to a printer if you're using on the, f on the tree. That would be quite similar, although you would be encouraged to, to do everything for uh, for your printer because there might be a couple of min millimeters differences between your printer and my printer. So, I guess, uh, should we kind of make a, a rough print of something, something like a test? Um, let, me, let me grab something from Thingiverse. And for like a small test print, I just want to see if it works. I'm just going to put it on SD card, I'm not even going to run it through Octoprint yet. Uh, bad. Bad leveling. Let's have a look. There might be some G codes for bad leveling. I think that's what we're gonna use. Uh, if you wanna see what I'm browsing, is it just me that Thingiverse it takes forever to search everything? Cause uh, okay. So there is one test in here. There is a test like here. Uh, I guess we can go with something like this. That would be a uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, I don't want to collect it. I want to download it. So let's download this. Thingiverse, you can do it. I still don't know what uh, what the error is on YouTube. It tells me a uh, more info. Let's have a look. Uh, having a clue what they mean. And my Thingiverse is just still thinking, wow. I mean, that can't be my internet, is it? I really hope that the stream isn't choppy or anything. Download files, uh, go on. And just once we're on the desktop. Let's open this file. Where is it? It's a good question. Uh, can I open it from here? It's fine. 
close, extract to and just to the desktop, please. Okay, and we need Cura. Now, if I remember correctly, you have to set out some level in Cura. Uh, So we're gonna take a look at how to set it up and uh, in a moment we're gonna see if it works. In the meantime I'm going to uh, preheat a hot end because I'm going to put a spool of filament. Um, so let's uh, do that. Uh, hot end, heat, um, no, no, back, preheat and I want PLA ok, hot end is getting heated up so I could slot in my filament so I have a, we'll have a white filament from here obviously not, so I don't use it which isn't great for this but uh, in terms of visual feedback but uh, that's why I've got So, uh, where's my camera? slightly curved so it's kind of hard to get uh, you know what so I'm just uh, <coughs> going to make my life easier <coughs> excuse me chop it off and then it's going to be much easier to slot it right, at least I hope come on Phil. and I lost it on the roll <laughs> be friends. I said it's going to be easier but uh, clearly it's not. It's tangled! Oh, come on. Uh, I've actually lost the print due to entanglement once, which was really annoying. Okay. Let's feed this and extrude a little bit uh, through the end. We've not done that before yet. Extrude uh, five millimeters. Okay, let's go. Um, no, nozzle. No. Uh, Okay, so I can do it with a knob, which is nice, all I have to do is just to twist this, and you can see. Ok, 
okay, I've got some black filament now coming out. That's nice. Uh, do I have a special to, to clean it off? Um, somewhere. Oh, there it is. No, you may not clean it off. So <clears throat> let's have a look what I do. What do I have to do online? So I'm just going to give you my screen capture again. So cure enable auto level. Do I have to do anything, or do I just select something in there? Because I have to probably reconfigure my printer now. That's two years old. Okay, let's uh, take a look at my settings first. Uh, manage printers. Uh, machine settings. Heated bed, heated build volume, G4 flavor, Marlin, excluded gentry hard. So, start codes. I could add this probably in here to level it first. If I'm correct, I'm just going to look in the further settings. Anyone? Anyone done that before? <laughs> Feel free to, to help me out if you want. Uh, so just gonna go through settings. Uh, oh, to send version. No, so I don't think I have it. And in profiles, uh, let's say standard quality. Do I have any information about auto leveling? No, I don't think I would have. So, so yeah, I'm probably gonna have to add a custom code to it if I'm correct. At least I hope I'm correct. Close. Uh, is any other configure cure? Backups, post processing, update settings. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think. I think that's the that's the only only way to do it. So uh, let's uh, have a look again on the website. Uh, check something on. Let's uh, look for something new. Uh, can I have a date range? No. Settings. New tools. Uh, last year. How to calibrate? Start script. Okay, so this is a start script for machine settings. That's what I was thinking. Access to the cure settings printer manage yeah, bottom left. Okay, so scripting tab. And just what G29 and then probe, is that all we need? Okay. <laughs> that was that was rather easy. Uh, so manage printers, machine settings. And that was uh, G29 for my probe. G29. Was the probe spelled with the upper? Uh, don't remember. Yes, with a lower case. Uh, okay, so do we have a spacing correct? Uh, Double check. Oh, it's upper upper case. Probe. 
Okay. Do we need to set a probe or something like that? Or it's gonna automatically detect? I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out quite soon. Close. Close. Okay. And now we can uh, open file. Desktop. So we have this nicely done. Let's slice it and dice it. 11 minutes and save to file. I'm going to put it in my card. And so let's go to the card. Save it. Alright. And, uh, and now for the fun bit. So I'm going to use a uh, screen. You can do it from a screen. Can I show you this? Uh, let's have a look. So you can either... Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing it from a screen. <coughs> At least I'm, I'm trying to do it from a screen. Uh, if someone said something right now, <laughs> it's the last time, to st uh, last occasion to stop me. No, nope, no one said anything. That's fine. Uh, let's go to menu. Uh, sorry, back. We need to print. Uh, TFTSD card and we have a, this G code, second G code okay it's doing something I'll be very ready to uh, stop it just in case something goes wrong Should move this cable here. Oh. So it's gonna do the all loads of points calibration or I'm like should have pointed here. It's gonna do all the points now. So definitely I need to resample the number of points for calibration. I only have I want to have nine, there's no point of doing so much. But for the sake of this, um, I'm just going to leave a B because I always <laughs> know what's gonna happen. Uh, I don't know what you think, guys. And if that's printed correctly, then it's fine. If it's not printed printed correctly, then it's some reading ahead for me. That's the plan, at least. So yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm really excited be because, uh, to be honest, I think there isn't enough kind of good read about it. Like I struggle to find stuff that would be explaining this well for people that are just getting started and it's a good news because uh, once I figure out and I, I'm able to use my ability to translate this into something uh, useful and I've spent the entire two days actually today and yesterday uh, videoing everything in a close detail step by step so you could see what's uh, what and how to connect stuff so that's I guess I'll never forget. I'll know everything now about how to connect the print. I can be, I can do it with the eyes closed. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, we kind of halfway there, slowly, but surely I probably should move this cable slightly as well. It's a, it's a mess cable wise, so uh, like I said, I'm going to do the cable managing probably tomorrow well, once I know everything works okay and I don't have to do anything fancy I still have to upgrade my um, Octoprint to the latest version I'm just gonna reset the entire card and give me a reason to do it and then I'll set everything including my mobile notifications and uh, I guess I might take it to a garage and it's gonna continue in the garage although right now it's so quiet that I don't think by wife would com uh, complain when it's printing so I'm um, I'm quite happy because I can't the, the um, he used to hear the whining of the stepper motors now it's gone it's just absolutely quiet all it is is just this power um, power brick which if you're gonna move this power brick uh, you know away then it's gonna be nearly silent which might be interesting mode actually would you move the power supply somewhere else and kind of just feed it with a longer 12 volt or 24 volt cable uh, or 
I don't know. It could be an idea, kind of just like dampen the noise coming from this. <laughs> It's very quiet on the live stream today, I can see. I don't know if there's any problems with the live stream. Um, can I just look it up on YouTube? Let me have a look on the mobile oh, really quickly. Because I've got this warning and it kind of worries me. Um, I'm just going to see if there's a, everything okay on the live stream. I need audio as well. Oh no, it's fine. That's good. That's cool. Hope you don't get any stuff or so on anything. So, but we uh, one more line. So that leveling takes about what is it? Five minutes. It's probably over the top. Once you get to your level, kind of don't do the first level and then probably redo level once a couple of months and then auto leveling is going to do the trick obviously you don't want your prints to be oriented this way you want to keep the level on the bed more or less and then we can test some uh, printing surfaces i'm looking forward to this so pro if that works i'm going to put it together and i'm going to print out the case for this because uh, i'm really s I'm concerned i'm going to destroy it Okay, it finished leveling. Is it heating up now? Yeah, it's heating up the bed. So the bed is uh, 65 now and it should start printing in a second. Once it's stabilized the temperature, the um, extruder is uh, 10 degrees too short. I'll show you how it looks like in a mid interface so you kind of have an idea. So it's printing, speed is 100%, layer 0 0.2. So it's homing right now. And it shows me it's going to be five minutes. Now, fingers crossed, that's going to be printing. <laughs> I'm going to wait with the power of button just in case. Because <laughs> I really, really worry it's going to go into the... Where is the power off? There is the power off. Okay, did my offset work? Oh, come on, it's <laughs> it's leveling again. So I think enabling leveling wasn't a smart idea because it's doing it again. Therefore, uh, it's out enabled. It, uh, I think it detects that uh, the, there is a probe connected because it's leveling for the second time after. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we like. Uh, Skip. No, okay, I'm not going to skip. Let it, let it do its own thing. I'll, I have five minutes to talk to you guys. So, what you've been up to? Do tell me. If you are right now connected and watching, if you're post watching it, then probably you don't tell me. But yeah, it, I'm gonna work on this video for a bit because I still have to get hold of the regular ender, which uh, right now it's a difficult situation because of the lockdown. And then I'll try to get a different printer so I could see if it's better. Like straight away I can tell you that it's definitely quieter, which is a definitely an improvement. And the touch interface interface is actually useful, um, which I would like two upgrades, the motherboard and that screen alone. It's definitely good up the upgrades. And uh, if that uh, self Outer leveling tool is going to work without any further problems, then uh, that's going to be three most uh, desired upgrades for your 3D printer. That's going to set you back for uh, like at 50, 60 pounds, so about 70 dollars. Definitely worth it. Now, if you're not using, if you're using Octoprint, then you can skip the screen whatsoever. It's not going to give you that much of advantage. However, it is nice to have this screen to, to kind of, um, you know, take a glance. Uh, if you have mobile notifications, you will see half of that information already there, uh, but you only get uh, an option to, to stop and start the, um, the print, which, uh, yeah. Uh, I have this wild idea that I could have a small panel also on the 
uh, 3D printer with a couple of buttons and the buttons would send the commands to uh, Octoprint again uh, so you could have quick uh, changes like for example a quick filament change button so I don't know if that's programmable if you can pro I've heard you can program stuff like that on the display uh, but uh, yeah that's something I would really really um, be interested in doing so you can have like a mid layer filament change and uh, enable disable uh, picture mode that's another thing that I would like to do and pause the resume so three four buttons uh, and lights, lights on and off because it supports NeoPixels and I'm going to have some pixels to go with it. So that's kind of the plan for it as well. Uh, but that's going to be definitely added later on once I'm kind of happy with, uh, with the printing because uh, otherwise it's going to be a never ending project. So if I'm uh, going to read more about adding custom buttons to, to this, but so far I really like this because. I've already ordered some crimping tools so I could uh, get this screen extended because this cable is quite short and uh, I'm thinking either it's going to be on top of the printer itself uh, on, on here uh, or it's going to be completely separate maybe I'll get like an IKEA uh, this, this table set up for like 12 pounds two tables, stack them together, put them there inside and then embed this into IKEA furniture because reasons <laughs> So maybe that's what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I think that would be cool. Mm, I have to. Mm, excuse me. I'm losing my voice again. <coughs> oh. Hmm. That's better. No, it's not better. <laughs> <coughs> oh. Yeah. I'm. I'm think. I think I'm losing my voice. Right, uh, one more line and we are off printing the, uh, the test layer and uh, let's hope that's going to be uh, sorted. Uh huh. Now I already have a problem. This is already too, too, too short and I've destroyed the surface. Uh, so I need to lift this really quickly. this yeah let's card it and to sand it down and fill it with so was the offset I think the offset was not big enough you'll see here it's a good thing I have a test surface that's my other accident and that's what happens when you run the hot end into a print bed damn it uh, Okay, so I'm just gonna put some glue and sand it down and it's gonna be smooth enough uh, again, but uh, I need to read more about the offsets because definitely the offset wasn't as what I've tested. Don't know what happened. It's disappointing. Okay, um, and that goes back in there. It's a good thing I've got two brand new surfaces to use. <laughs> hmm. Anyone's got an idea? Because I don't. <sighs> okay. So, what is actual? Let's uh, let's see. can resume this. No. Don't want to update. So what is the actual offset? Let's have a look and see what went wrong. Offset isn't saved right now. Why it is not saved? I was pretty sure I was pretty sure I... Okay, let's home it again. Home. Well, that's disappointing.
for our position. Our position right now is 17, which makes more sense because it kind of maybe looks like 17. So if I go to movement offset. Yeah, there's nothing here. I don't. I was pretty sure I've saved this. And it feels like he didn't remember this uh, value. Um, okay, let's try again. So we want to go back. We want to move Z down by 10. And now by 1. We still can move it down. No, that more. Mm, yeah. So now it shows me four point three, which is worrying because last time I had seven. So, I don't know what I did wrong last time, I did everything in the same way. So, 4.3. Movement. Offset. That was minus, oh, I forgot. Yeah. So this is 4.3 plus. Can I just do it like this when you go to here, offset and set? It's clear why there was. Why is it just for no this is I think this is just a resetting the value. I honestly don't know. I honestly haven't got a clue. Okay, uh, let's uh, go back, let's uh home Z again. position is Z10. That's definitely not a 10 millimeters. So if I gonna move let's home everything again. See if the position changes. And I should have the same reading as well. Okay, Z10 is the same. Okay, so let's go movement, APO. Oh, uh, no, no, the first one is move, uh, Z down. And now, and now, so low. Let's 
still the same. Okay, let's assume, so this is minus 2.9. Each time I have a different values. This is really <laughs> confusing right now. So minus 3, okay, let's try and that offset. Okay, save. Setting stored, okay. So we have a setting stored, go back. Print. We have a copy on board? No. So I need to put it here. Let's see if I'm gonna regret this. And before I'm gonna do, uh, we've got two calibration, I'm gonna slice this. Manage printers, uh, machine settings, and we don't want that extra auto. Slice it. Save to file. Replace the file. Okay. And let's have a look what's going to happen. Did I do it correctly or not? Okay. So, leveling. Again. <laughs> uh. mm, so it's doing its own thing. It's gonna do this and uh, level the bed if that won't work then I can ask some uh, people from Hackspace uh, to help me I think Jim set up uh, one of them before so uh, that might be a good idea in fact I'm just going to send you a message quick message it's good to have friends even if you don't get to see them. Okay, message sent. We have the backup plan. So far, so good, guys. Uh, I will see. Uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't auto level now the second time, which means uh, my um, settings weren't necessary for this version of Cura. I've, I've read somewhere that uh, it was only needed for like all the version of Cura. So hopefully that was the case for the second uh, leveling. And uh, once it's done, I'm just gonna print some stuff. As long as kind of prints on the level that is lower than <laughs> uh, than this probe, then I'm happy. 
um, because it means I'm just going to take a bit better measurements next time. And that's how you change the offset. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to just get the calipers out, measure the difference between the, uh, the touch and the um, extruder, and uh, probably compile the firmware myself, which I'm not really looking forward to. It shouldn't be that complicated. <laughs> At least that's what I think. So yeah, if you just joined me, I'm uh, having a problem actually calibrating uh, the outer leveling probe. I've managed to destroy my printing surface <laughs> once <laughs> uh, and I'm going to have another go and try to destroy it for the second time so keep the fingers crossed, it's fun if uh, that won't work then uh, I'll try to read some more about it and figure out what else I can do to, to avoid such a disaster I'm, I'm just quite happy I didn't put the glass pad smart enough not to A little bit more, and we're gonna be springing to action. Now it's a little bit disappointing that uh, uh, maybe it's a good idea. It's not. Oh, my cooling fan isn't on. Can I just change it midway? No, it's not on. Okay, well, I guess it will gonna change itself. I still have to read about what is a baby step. So I don't know what baby step is. Percentage, baby step feature, let color. Mm -hmm. You can change the LED cell on the fly, that's nice. What's the percentage? Yeah, that's speed, okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, I like the settings on this. It's uh, The screen is really cool, actually. It lets you do a lot of things that uh, are less accessible on the standard film. Okay, last roll, and we'll be either emergency braking this <laughs> again or um what should I call it or it will actually work okay it's it's doing its own thing and then it's heating up now uh bed temperature twenty one degrees okay I don't know what it's doing it's heating up the bed yet? Yes, it's heating up the bed now. It's fine. I can see it now. So yeah, um, that's, that's that kind of the plan for today. That fails, then uh, back to square one, go to do some reading, and hopefully I will be much smarter after today. No answer from Jim yet, but we're about to find out if I did it right or wrong. Kind of makes me regret that I didn't put that second stop, I didn't splice it. I might do it. Just as especially if you're gonna use a glass bed or something, it's good to have that second stop just in case. So are we doing the beds nearly there? It's 53 out of 65. And then the hot end. Please work. Do you think it's gonna work guys? I don't think I don't know. And I can't look it up there. It would be nice if this display actually show you also the how much filament you're gonna use because it shows you percentage like if you can take a look while it's heating up uh, if you shows you right uh, now the uh, hot end is being heated now mid print this is the options that you've got I don't want to press stop uh, 
as you can play about with the heat, fun settings, extrusion, percentage of sp sp speed, LED color, stuff like that. Maybe I'll try to abort it with stop on the panel in case. We'll see how that works. We can uh, <laughs> figure out if that's a good way to abort the print or just power it down and uh, <laughs> do it. <laughs> Right, I, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to scar my surface anymore. It's. Uh, I know it's a test surface right now, and I'm going to have a much better surface in a moment. But until I'm hundred percent sure that this works, I'm like, oh. it's uh, one hundred and forty-four. So we're still waiting a little bit. So right now, if it doesn't hit the bed and just prints slight, just a tiny little bit over the bed, it's 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 fine. It's I'm happy. Uh, is it 170? So nearly there, guys. So we'll know in a second if it worked. That's at least the idea. Okay, moment of truth, five degrees left. Will I be panic, uh, heat panicking stuff or? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're going to level it again. I thought I deleted the auto leveling. Uh, no, I, it might be printing actually. I'm, I'm ready with the stop button. Oh, come on! Okay, it's lower, but uh, so I needed to stop this because it looked like he was scaring it. I just don't want that to happen. Okay, so it kind of worked. So I'm, I don't have a I don't have a problem with this because uh, right now I was kind of doing it for tests, so it's not a big mountain like. You see, this is why I did, and it kind of made a big mess, right? And that was the old one. Uh, but right now, it started, it wasn't very even in here, and uh, like I said, the bed right now is off, and uh, I didn't calibrate the touch properly, so it kind of left quite a bit of the difference there. So I didn't do it carefully, but I think that's how you do it. So you have to measure it carefully, check the steps, and then and the front of the printer so that's what I'm gonna be playing with tomorrow uh, figure out the proper way to, to do it and uh, uh, calibrate it and then make a test print and my first print is gonna be probably just enclosure for this so it wouldn't break this so yeah that's the plan so everything else is working I'm quite happy gonna read about uh, adding custom menus for the uh, for the 3d printer and see if I can get my own buttons and yeah, that's that's it. That's it. And then I'm just gonna put the video back together, and uh, we'll be ready to roll. All right, guys. I'm gonna go because I only have a limited amount of time today. Unfortunately, uh, I have loads of things to do, and uh, someone has to do it. And it's me. So um, I hope you're gonna find. That tips that I've shown you uh, useful, especially with the connectivity. Uh, I'm gonna have exact, probably very detailed guide of how I calibrated it, so you don't end up destroying your print surface like I did. And uh, yeah, and if you uh, if you want to get an update to uh, web, it's in the link. Like upgrades uh, all the parts I've got. The link in the description of this video, so you can just uh, jump in there and uh, take a look. As for now, guys, I will say a uh, good night because it's past 9 p.m. in here and uh, I need to get ready because I have to get up early. So I'll see you very, very soon and I have a post in the production as well so you'll read something extra soon. Right. Thanks so much for all of you that joined me and I hope you have a pleasant night.
I'll see you soon.